Hi everybody, this is God's Out for the Sad Truth. Yesterday I shared uh, an abstract of a paper uh, on how to queer mathematics, yes, as a verb. Uh, so, you know, you could queer architecture and you could queer archaeology and you can queer pedagogy in general. Uh, but I wanted to actually look for the field that one would argue is the least, quote, queerable, because by definition, mathematics is a discipline that one would like to think is uh, free of value judgments and all of the things that uh, social justice warriors would fight. And so I started doing some searches looking for any attempts by someone to queer mathematics. And by the way, this is not a term uh, that is derogatory. This is actually the term that is used by people in this uh, area of, quote, study uh, under the broad umbrella of queer studies. Uh, the paper in question was published in Sex Education uh, by Kathleen Rands in May 2009. The title of the paper is Mathematical Inquiry, but inquiry is spelled I-N-Q-U and then bracket E-E -E, close bracket R-Y, so in queer, query, colon beyond add queers and stir, those are in quote, elementary mathematics education. And you, you just have to read this paper. It is breathtaking. I actually downloaded it to look at it. And uh, I decided to go beyond the abstract. I didn't read the whole paper uh, word for word because I think this would uh, drive any person, even the most patient, uh, to the brinks of uh, jumping off a building. But I did uh, find a few quotes uh, that I'd like to read for you here. So at one point, uh, the the author in question quotes somebody else, Kumashiro in 2004, uh, who says, what and how we teach math are influenced by social factors and do have hidden messages that often reinforce oppression. And so the satire that I'm about to offer you is actually rooted in exactly the way these folks think, right? Uh, mathematics, even though it is by definition the one area where you could argue is absolutely free of human biases and, and all of the other social justice warrior issues that uh, these types of SJWs like to uh, fight against, uh, apparently not. Apparently, uh, mathematics is laden with oppression and patriarchy and racism and so on. Uh, and so I thought I would read here another quote from the uh, author in question. Let me just read it for you here. As another example, this is her remedy for how we could queer mathematics in elementary school. So as another example, a third grade teacher might incorporate queer symbols into a geometry lesson. The teacher passes out buttons, bumper stickers, and other items with symbols such as pink triangles, gay flags, interlocking female or male symbols, and so forth, the teacher poses the following questions. What is the area and perimeter of each symbol? For two interlocking female symbols, what is the area of the overlapping part? What fraction of the gay flag is green and blue? How could you construct a pink triangle that has twice the perimeter of the one on the button? In these two examples, teachers pose questions that challenge students to think and do mathematics in the context of a queer inclusive scenario. And then she also uh, puts out a, a, a call to arms. The time has come to queer elementary mathematics education. This is not satire. This is an actual author who is explaining to us how to queer the field of mathematics to very young children. And so I thought, as somebody who has studied mathematics, I have a undergraduate degree in math and computer science in my MBA. I did a mini thesis in operations research. And then in my MS and PhD, uh, my minor, uh, I studied statistics. I have a minor in stats at the doctoral level. And of course, in my scientific career, I use all sorts of mathematical tools when I'm analyzing data and so on. So I'm certainly somebody who's 
very proficient in mathematics. And so, the, you know, I've taken courses in discrete mathematics and probability and statistics. And of course, I'm familiar with operations of the research and linear algebra and differential equations, calculus, logic. And there are other fields uh, that one can list, things like non-Euclidean geometry and number theory. But I think that all of these fields uh, might be racist and patriarchal and sexist and transphobic because we don't have a field such as social justice mathematics. I suggest that, uh, and I'm introducing here this new field of social justice mathematics that will likely revolutionize the field of mathematics to make it more inclusive and fair. And so I'd like to sort of, this is some, some thoughts that I put down on paper to try to show you how there is a lot of oppression in mathematics and how using the example of the author in question that I just cited with pink triangles and interlocking females and so on in, in word problems, here are some thoughts that I have to show you how math could be racist and how we can get around it by using social justice mathematics. Here we go. So to state that a number is irrational marginalizes mental illness. There are many ways to be rational. Don't stigmatize the irrational. There are no rational or irrational numbers in social justice mathematics, just numbers. So you see how by not calling something using you know a derogatory term, you, you liberate the numbers and you allow them to be all that they can be. To state that some numbers are prime while others are not creates a hierarchy wherein being, quote, prime is viewed as unique and different. In social justice mathematics, all numbers are equally prime or equally divisible. Numbers can self-identify as they see fit. The unequal and inequality signs are ways by which we infuse the language of patriarchy and oppression into children's minds. What does it mean to say that three is less than five? Why? Who said so? All numbers are born equal and have equal worth. You see, this is a lot more fair, inclusive. It allows for diversity of numbers and so on. This is what social justice mathematics is. Odd numbers teach children the process of othering. It is through this labeling that children start calling other children as odd. Get rid of odd numbers and you get rid of bullying. There is an incredible amount of hurtful labeling of numbers. We have prime numbers, real numbers, odd numbers, imaginary numbers, etc. You are putting numbers into a box. You are stereotyping them. You are pigeonholing them. Why is one number, quote, real, while another is not? All numbers are real. They are not fake or artificial. How would you feel if you were called imaginary when you know that you are real? Instead, rise up and say, I am an imaginary number and I am here. Hashtag all numbers matter. The Laplace transform is a transphobic operator. It uses the trans prefix to push the idea that the trans is to be changed to another form, as though it is not worthy of love and dignity as is. Roman numbers can be triggering because they glorify one culture whilst marginalizing other cultures and their numbers. What about African numbers, Latino numbers, Samoan numbers? Social justice mathematics believes in the cultural diversity of numbers. The use of the labels positive numbers and negative numbers is also othering. It reinforces the idea that some things are, quote, positive, while others are, quote, negative. All numbers have a voice. Let's not marginalize some numbers at the expense of others. You see how by having social justice mathematics, this could really put the United States, Canada, and the rest of the West at the forefront of science because it will get rid of these old antiquated ideas of math like, you know, Isaac Newton's calculus and all of the other racist, sexist, colonizing mathematics. This is much more of a social justice 
uh, infused field of mathematics. I think you'll like the next one. E equilateral triangles are the only allowed triangles in social justice mathematics because this shape recognizes the equality of all three sides. The isosceles and scaling triangles perpetuate racism and homophobia. We're almost done, three more to go. Perfect numbers perpetuate the notion that if you strive enough, you too could be perfect. This is how women succumb to the thin ideal and develop eating disorders. There are no perfect and imperfect numbers. All numbers are perfect just the way they are. Hashtag all numbers matter. To say that 2 plus 3 equals 5 presumes that numbers self-identify according to their actual integer value. This might be true for cis numbers. However, if the 3 self-identifies as a 2, then 2 plus 3 equals to 4. Social justice mathematics is introducing a new form of mathematics in grade school known as identity mathematics. And then finally, binary numbers in computer science are transphobic because they serve to perpetuate the language of binary discourse when it comes to human sexuality. Now you might think that this is funny satire, or maybe you don't think it's funny satire, but in any case, the truly sad and deeply problematic reality is that that which I'm satirizing is actually extraordinarily uh, indicative of that which we are seeing in education. It, it is literally a collective exercise in mass delusion, mass lunacy, and the more that people who are in a position to speak out against this nonsense do so, uh, the quicker we can get rid of this nonsense. And certainly, I mean, you might think that, uh, you know, why am I wasting time on December 27th putting together this clip uh, when I should maybe be just having fun with my family? Well, that's because I don't want my children to end up in a class uh, in elementary school uh, where the teacher is a ideological activist who rather than teaching my children uh, the fundamentals of mathematics, uh, he or she or they or zer is teaching them uh, how to queer mathematics. Uh, all people deserve respect. No one should be exposed to uh, bigotry and hatred, but this doesn't mean that it is permissible to infuse the teaching of mathematics to children with ideological nonsense. Have a good day, everybody. Ciao.